When I was 10, they called me the Batman Kid. By they, I primarily mean the skater guy who owned the comic book shop in the rural Illinois town where I grew up. When the place opened midway through my fifth grade year, I got sucked in by the window displays of warheads, jawbreakers, and creepy crawlers, and quickly developed an addiction much more expensive than candy. Comic books. Batman was my gateway drug, and I couldn't get enough. Detective Comics, Batman and Robin, Legends of the Dark Knight. So I got serious. I got a paper route, then my own little layaway cubbyhole. Yes, I was a regular for the first time in my life, and entirely out of my league. I was surrounded by legends. Not the comics, the kids who bought them. My 10-year-old brain could conceive of nothing cooler than guys who could both drive and buy comics. And if the comic connection was the royal court of cool, Alex Brown was their king. He had everything going for him. Long hair, skateboard, anti-establishment attitude, and most importantly, the ability to draw a flawless Dr. Doom on his shop's new arrivals chalkboard. Yeah, he drew with chalk. By day, the instrument of my enslavement at Center School, somehow repurposed within the walls of the shop to create works of staggering beauty and terrible impermanence. One week, a spot on Spider-Man. The next, Punisher. Doc Ock, the Green Goblin. It seemed utterly impossible such talent could exist in my hometown. One day, I muster the confidence to ask, is it really you who draw those pictures? Yeah, he said. Who else would do it? I don't know, man. They're awesome. <laughs> Ten years of courage spent, I headed for the door. On my way out, I heard one of the regulars ask, Hey, Alex, do you know him? Yeah, Alex said. That's the Batman kid. And every endorphin in my ten-year-old brain went into hyperdrive. I had a name. A name! He was Alex the Skater, and I, I was the Batman kid! We suddenly sounded like a plausible duo, almost peers. And if DC characters could occasionally cross into the Marvel Universe, surely the Batman Kid and Alex the Skater could have their own share of adventures, maybe a series worth. So I started going to the shop more regularly and even brought my own drawings. Horrible renderings of Spider-Man and Green Lantern that Alex couldn't quite bring himself to compliment. You're always telling me crazy stories, dude, he said one afternoon. Ever try writing them down? Yeah, I write all the time. I lied. Me too, he said, rummaging in one of the cubby holes. Check this out. He tossed what looked like a graphic novel on the counter, only it was missing pictures. It was a literary journal from a local college. He flopped it open and pointed out his name in print, not chalk. Permanent. Alex Brown. He wasn't just talented. This guy was famous. His story's premise? Robocop happened upon the Punisher in a parking garage at a local community college. It ended badly. I read it twice, and then he let me take it home. And writing became cool. In the coming weeks, I worked on my own Punisher spin-off series. Not Robocop or parking garages, of course. Nothing so crassly derivative as that. I took it up a notch. Punisher versus Freddy Krueger. Punisher versus Jason. Punisher versus Critters. Get me? I showed Alex every one of them, and unlike with the drawings, he gave me generous encouragement and would steer me toward the latest shipment of EC Comics. Alex kept writing too, and within the year he launched his own comic book. He made some connections out west, and the inevitable finally happened. He got too cool for my hometown. He came looking for me the afternoon he left, but I was out with a friend and missed his goodbye. He talked to my parents on the front lawn for two hours, left a short note, and was gone. So are you looking for the story where the hero ultimately disappoints? Where he turns out to use drugs or grows up to be some garden variety asshole? Well, not this time. In my eyes, Alex rode that ramp of coolness probably on his skateboard as high as it could go and vanished somewhere in the gray passage of time, leaving a handful of postcards with defunct addresses and the needling ghost of memory that catches you in your 30s, taps you on the shoulder and says, where did Alex go? Why'd you lose touch? And you search Facebook and Google, but you realize the last name Brown is a cloak of invisibility, a ninja smoke bomb, a Jedi mind trick. And you make peace with that, because maybe that's what Alex the Skater had in mind for the Batman kid all along, part of the plan, to be the mentor who leaves his mark, and poof, it's gone. Just like a superhero.